So I want to welcome everybody here. Let me um, let me go quick share my screen for a second. Uh, this is EdChat Interactive. My name is Mitch Weisberg. I'm generally the host of EdChat Interactive, but the two people who are going to be presenting are Carrie Angle and Ryan Schaff, and they put together uh, they curated a great resource of games that can be used in education, and they're going to be going through a few of their favorite games this afternoon. Um, also want to alert you that we do have other upcoming events here at EdChat Interactive. Um, you know, today, as you can see, we have uh, Carrie and Ryan are talking. Tomorrow, we're having um, Aka Johnson, who's going to be talking about STEM challenges that motivate students. And then Thursday, we're having another friend of mine, uh, Jennifer Quattracci. Uh, Jennifer um, is really, uh, it's hard to say she's an expert, but she really is an expert at how to connect with kids either when you're in the classroom or especially now when the kids are remote and how do you kind of feed them emotionally to get them ready for learning and um, and for life. So so those are the things those are the three sessions that we're having this week. We have one next week and I think two the following week or one June 17th and one July 14th. So let me stop sharing my screen and I'm going to hand it over to Ryan and Carrie and um, thank you for coming. And uh, welcome to welcome to Zoom World. <laughs> uh, so yeah, just give me a sec. Let me get my stuff squared away here. Uh, let's see. I'm going to share this one right here. Thank you for yeah. that lovely introduction, Mitch. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't be nice to Mitch. No, no. I, I uh, it it inflates my head, and then like I'm horrible with my family after that. <laughs> okay, everybody, uh, I think that is up now. I'm just going to shrink this a little bit. So um, just a little bit of an introduction. So I'll, I'll go first. Um, uh, so my name is Ryan Schaff, and I'm an associate professor, a professor of educational technology at Notre Dame of Maryland University. It's a small liberal arts college in Baltimore, Maryland. I've also um, uh, been an adjunct for years at Johns Hopkins in their um, School of Education uh, for their program. Um, uh, before that, I was a K through 12 um, teacher for many, many years. Uh, I've taught um, uh, third grade. I was an instructional team leader, and I was also a technology teacher for many years. So I've been actually using digital games in the classroom ever since uh, about 2006, 2007, um, when I had my own lab of computers and I would use it with my students. Um, and that's really how I kind of developed my passion. And uh, from that, I've written books. I've done a lot of these webinars. I've done a lot of keynotes and presentations and workshops and on gaming, on game-based learning, gamification, and anything when it comes to play-based learning and just, um, just you know, kids in general, student-centered learning. So, and now I'm going to turn it over to my co-host Carrie, who is uh, much uh, better of a speaker than I am. Go ahead, okay. Carrie. Take it away. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Angel. Um, I've been a teacher in Baltimore City Public Schools for um, almost a decade now. I see some of my coworkers here. So, hey, shout out to Ash Burton. Um, I also studied at Johns Hopkins University, where I studied um, digital age learning and technology. And I've really had a passion for video games my whole life. And so being able to mix that with my other passion being education. And I think that video games are really kind of the um, cornerstone of engaging our students in especially the 21st century where our students want to be not only engaging in things, they want to be creating things, they want to be a part of things. And so games really allow us to give that opportunity to children. So in my classroom, I've really tried to put a lot of gaming in there. We've gotten creative with using different devices, kids bringing in their own phones. And uh, so this is just some of the stuff that we're showcasing for teachers to, and parents as well. Uh, th thanks, Carrie. And just to let you know, we want this to be participatory and um, we do like active participation. If you are unused to using Zoom, there is a chat feature. It should be on your, um, should be down in your, uh, with all your functions and all your buttons. You can click on it and Carrie and I have volunteer along with Mitch, uh, volunteered to kind of um, mine that. So we will answer that as quickly as we can uh, as we present. So feel free to ask questions or leave nice comments. We don't like negativity here, so sorry. Uh, you can just uh, bash us in the back later. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. So 
COVID-19 really uh, threw global education into disarray. For weeks, kids uh, were stuck at home with little support. Um, there was a great deal of uncertainty as school systems attempted to create remote learning, um, which is more of triage at this point. Um, it, you know, it, to, to this day, we're still trying to react to uh, a system uh, to a situation, to a system that wasn't used to this. It, well, you know, it can't turn on a dime. Uh, so it's really unbelievable just uh, the amount of uncertainty and just how what, what ends up becoming scary enough is a new normal. So parents were desperate not to allow uh, a serious academic slide in their children while uh, they were in quarantine. Uh, many people globally turned to games for distraction, socialization, uh, and even fun. Um, just a little bit about, um, uh, let's see, just a little bit about gaming in general. The, um, the gaming industry um, has been thriving for years and is really largely at this point recession proof. Um, in fact, many gaming companies have reported an increase in sales because of many of the people being stuck uh, at home and taking shelter. Um, so even before the pandemic, there are over 2 billion players uh, of games in the world today. Um, there's over $120 billion in sales, and that was from 2019. Now, we're going to notice a big um, hole in the 2020 numbers because they couldn't have a lot of the conferences or a lot of the events uh, because of COVID-19. So the data is going to probably have a hole this year um, when it comes to just uh, the 2020 sales and so forth. About 73% of U.S. consumers play video games. And uh, the demographics are uh, shifting. Um, in fact, they're shifting almost yearly. In the U.S., 46% of gamers are women, while 54% are men. And the average, the average ages are 34 and 32, respectively. So we're starting to kind of get out of the stigma of gamers being just these adolescent boys huddled in a garage, you know, in a basement playing in the dark. Um, we're starting to discover that all sorts of demographics, all sense of cultures, everybody with different voices are actually starting to play games. And it's not so much, you know, the children are still playing. There's still a lot of children playing, but we're discovering that the adults aren't putting down their, their, um, they're not putting down their controllers uh, when they get older and deciding that games are a waste of time. Now they're actually staying. They're actually keeping the controllers in their hands and they're playing and a lot of them are actually starting to play with their kids um mobile is by far the largest global platform for distributing games um, it's easy it's quick so even the um uh, you know the 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 people that are just mobile learn, uh, mobile players or the people that are just playing for casual games uh, they are really enjoying being able to just sit down for 15 minutes and just lose themselves in these games and then with COVID-19, there was this massive boost in gameplay. Um, Verizon is reporting a 75% increase in usage. Um, and that's not to mention the large companies like Nintendo, Epic, and EA. They're making a lot of, uh, they're increased their revenues, dra uh, revenue drastically because of the pandemic, because people are just hunkered down. So the phenomenon of gaming is invading new demographics. It's disrupting new markets and providing human connection in a time of social distancing. So gaming can help us in this current pandemic. Yeah, let me, sorry. sorry, I'm running dual screens here. It's a little kind of loopy. So <clears throat> go ahead, uh, take it away, Carrie. Um, so in the past, Ryan and I have co-taught a course at Johns Hopkins University in digital learning and technology program on game-based learning. Uh, we've also written about the potential for gaming and learning when we've partnered with Amplify to create a blog series that ultimately was published into a white paper. Um, we're going to include the link for that in case anyone's interested in reading another free source on digital games and learning. Um, and we had so much fun with that, we decided we were going to start a long-term project. So. Our long-term commitment to game-based learning, um, we've started a project called the Learning Arcade. It's going to be a comprehensive, um, very detail-rich, self-published book. Uh, lots of research-based um, information in there, lots of games, and uh, connections to standards, connections to learning, 
But then once COVID-19 hit and we kind of uh, saw this need that was arising with parents homeschooling children and teachers having to find new and interesting ways to engage students, uh, any educators here, I'm sure we've all had the struggle of getting our students onto Google Meet. And then once they're there, keeping them engaged, keeping them excited while they have a lot of things in their home to distract them. So more than ever, we're really fighting for their attention. And we decided that we kind of had to pivot and use what we already had been stockpiling in our learning arcade and turn that into our uh, free guide for digital age games, um, digital based games in uh, during COVID-19. Okay, so yes, so we had a change of plans. So what we ended up doing is um, we decided to support teachers and educators and students that were not trapped or that were trapped at home now for their own safety. Uh, we decided to create this free guide sharing over 40 games and 10 learning game hubs we had collected when writing uh, the Learning Arcade. And we ended up uh, just deciding to make a free guide that would be benefit people uh, as this almost just-in-time resource to kind of, you know, I don't, we want to say save the day. Uh, we're not trying to take advantage of anything in this situation. That's why it's free and we want to help people. Uh, we're not making a dime off this. Uh, <laughs> we really just passionately promote the use of gaming and learning. Uh, so we wanted to get this into the hands of people as quickly as we could. Um, so there is the link to the resource. It'll take you to um, a post where you can download it. It's, um, it's a PDF. Um, so feel free to uh, download it. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, it's also uh, the link that will be provided to you uh, later on as well. Um, so I'm just going to leave that up there for a moment so people, so our audience could go ahead and just access it. Um, and, it'll also be Carrie, Carrie also put it into the chat. Yep. So that's actually a clickable link. So that's probably the best way to access it right now. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give folks just a minute to access it um, either in the chat or in here, taking a look in um, and, and I appreciate how everybody's also sharing all the things that they're playing with their students. So I want to make it clear is that we're also big passionate believers in non-digital games as well. Um, I know that I'm doing all sorts of board games with my kids. We're doing um, Jenga, Monopoly, Life. Um, mm -hmm. We're starting to, my, you know, my children are playing a lot of card games with us. Um, so it is quite a lot. And, you know, it's, you know uh, I'm seeing people talking about Dungeons and Dragons, um, mm -hmm. and d and and World of Warcraft. So again, just very passionate there and people are finding these really constructive outlets and, and you know we have to understand that gaming is not a waste of time we learn a lot about our player the people that we're playing we also learn a lot about ourselves as we play these games uh, i also been playing jackbox and, and um yeah it's i'm st I, you all are going to be teaching me just as much because uh you know this is like almost like a word on the street um, so I'm hoping everybody was able to gain access to that. Again, go to the chat. We'll, we'll try and copy and paste it in there every few minutes. This way you have access to it. Okay. So let me, uh, click it over to here. Okay. Uh, go ahead, Carrie. Excellent. So as hopefully you guys have, um, are taking a look at the guide and have it up in front of you, you'll see that there's, as Ryan mentioned, over 40 games. So coming up with these games was a whole process by itself. We wanted to make sure we had a lot of variety um, to showcase different things for different age groups, different platforms. And so this is where accessibility came in. We know some families are more Apple friendly, some families have Android, some families only have tablets, some families have video game consoles, and that is their primary way of gaming. So we wanted to make sure that we had that variety and cost as well. So you'll see most of the games on the guide are free. Um, some of them, if it's a really comprehensive app or a really well-designed game, it might have a cost or there might be a free version. And then if you and your family or your students and learners really enjoy it, sometimes paying uh, those content creators to support them and getting that full comprehensive game can be worth it. Uh, for, this game, for this project, we also kind of bent the rules for the Learning Arcade. We had decided we were not going to be using a lot of Flash games because Flash is kind of on its way out the door. But with this guide, it really needed to be current, it needed to be relevant, it needed to be fast. 
So flash games still remain one of the easiest and best ways to engage people because they're so easy. You can pull them up in any browser. And uh, personally, I've used them a lot in remote learning with my students. So uh, we do gaming Fridays. So every Friday they log in and I can just share my screen as we're doing now and they can get a chance to engage with a flash game. Some of them are even multiplayer as well. Um, reputation had something to do with it. We definitely took that, um, read some reviews, saw what other people thought, but really the best way to do that was just playing the games ourselves. So it, it was a fun project. It included a lot of playing games. Um, it had to grab us within two minutes because as adults, if I'm playing a game and I'm not interested, we know our learners aren't going to be. It had to connect to learning in some way. So of course, uh, we could make the argument that a lot of games do teach us a lot of different things but we were specifically looking for something that could help parents and teachers bridge learning gaps and something that could connect to either skills they're learning in school, concepts that they might be needing to reinforce or social emotional learning. Um, and then the last piece was we wanted to make sure it had an ease of adoption so or a good tutorial system. So again, as an adult, if I can't figure the game out in a couple of minutes, we know our learners are just gonna be frustrated and without a teacher walking behind them, uh, we wanted to make sure that they'd be able to figure out the game easily and play independently as possible. There you go. I'm Carrie <laughs> for the next one. Excellent. <laughs> um, so you'll notice that the games, that each game has its own page dedicated to it. So you'll see that there is a title for it. Um, you'll see the screenshot of the game so you can kind of see what the aesthetic is like as well because sometimes that can help if you're looking for something colorful or if you're looking for something more serious. Uh, you'll see an age range and for the age range we tried to stay as easy as possible. So moving forward back into our next project we would probably be honing in on standards, honing in on specific grade levels or specific contents. But here we were just looking for a general age range, something that a third or fourth grader could play, something that a middle schooler could play as opposed to specific. So you'll see that there's primary, in, which is uh, our younger grades. So pre-K to two, three-ish, um, intermediate, which would be our upper elementary and middle school, and then secondary, which would mostly be high school, um, possibly even some college level and possibly even some um, upper middle school. I know some of the games even taught me stuff, so, you know, adults too. Um, we, you'll also see academic subjects listed there. Again, nice and simple skills and concepts. We wanted this to be as user-friendly and as parent-friendly as possible, so we tried to take off our educator hats and put on our parent hats as much as possible. Um, there's also available platforms listed, so it'll tell you every single way you can get the game. Some of them are listed on literally every platform you could imagine, and links to them as well. So you can just click a link if something looks interesting, and you'll have the web browser up in two seconds, or it'll take you to a page where you could buy the app or look at reviews. You'll also see a summary of the game where we tried to just give you a quick snapshot. What's the game about? How does it play? How does it grab the learner? And for suggested gameplay, this um, is intended for parents or teachers to know how much support the child or the learner will need. So it will either be independent play, which we figured is you can just hand it to a child and they will figure it out. They don't really need you. So if you're about to jump on a meeting and your kid is, you know, needs something to do, you can hand it to them two minutes before you log into your meeting and they shouldn't need any help from you. Guided play is um, they might need just a little bit of guidance. They might need you to show them the ropes a little bit before they can get started. You also could try to partner them up with a, um, another learner, either an older sibling or another classmate of theirs. And then supported play. This is a game that might need you to sit down with them, talk with them. You could play it as a family game night or you could do it during your Google Meet sessions with your learners and kind of walk through the game and chat as you're playing. Wonderful. Okay. Advancing to the next slide here. Sorry. There we go. Okay. So here's the general outline of, uh, or I should say the, the, the page out layout for um, a typical entry. And this is uh, Exotrex 2, uh, who um, it was actually developed by um, a gaming company actually in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, Digit Games. Uh, they do such a, a great job like developing content. Um, uh, so I'm a fan of their work. Um, so extra, you know, as you can see, 
the who it's for secondary learners. So obviously it's going to be, um, you know, students in, in high school or maybe upper middle school um, for when it's, it's, you know, it's, it's what content is being uh, addressed, what, um, what content, what uh, subject area, science, space, physics, uh, chemistry, where it's a web-based game. So those are active links will take you to the actual um, to the actual game or uh, review of the game. So this way you can gain access to the game. If it's on multiple platforms, we try to link it to everyone that we could find. Uh, so if it's on um, you know iOS, if it's on Google Play, we've included uh, we include active links uh, for people to click on. We also try to give a very short and concise summary. Uh, this way it's not gonna bore people. They're quickly gonna understand what the content of the game is, what the premise is, uh, and what hopefully that they'll actually learn. And again, how is it independent play? Is it um, play that requires support? Um, uh, you know, is it, is it guided or it, does it need 100% support from the parent or the, the teacher? So let me go to the next one. And guess what we're going to get ready to do? We are going to get ready for our first hands-on activity. Um, so what I'd like to do right now, and sorry about the misspelled word, it's supposed to be gallery walk, uh, you know, my lazy fingers, I guess. Um, so what I'm going to have you do is you haven't done so already, please go to and visit the, uh, the guide. I'd like you to download and open it. Um, please go ahead and scan through the guide and see if you can find an interesting game. And what we can do is in the chat box, we can uh, do a quick little sharing session. So let's take about two or three minutes to download it, uh, take a look through it, and let us know any of the games that you might be interested in. Uh, and we'll get back to you in the chat section. So um, just going to stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and Taddy gets an award for being a good helper. She even put the link in up there, just helping us out. So thank you. Yes. <laughs> And, and, and if you really are getting interested in game-based learning or gaming, um, Mitch brought up a good suggestion. Uh, if, you're, if you use Twitter, the hashtag games for ed, uh, it's games, capital G-A-M-E-S, four, the number four, and then capital E-D, games for ed, is a very active um, uh, hashtag online. Uh, it's also uh, the nonprofit that uh, Mitch helps to run when it comes to gaming and learning. It's really a great... Um, uh, it's it's really a, a, like a great like almost like a think tank uh, of people that are trying to actively promote the learning of games. Um, so it's just please check it out if you want further um, further help or if you want further resources or to connect with kindred spirits. Slice fractions is awesome. I, as a math teacher myself, I love slice fractions. It's a really great way to introduce fractions to uh, either to younger students who are just learning it for the first time or to an upper elementary student who needs to go back and get that reinforcement. It's a great way to close those gaps and do interventions. Gene, I used to use Power Up. It's, it's, that's one of the games that are flash based. So I'm, I'm worried that at the end of the year, it's going to disappear. Um, but it was actually developed by, I think a national science federation or, or foundation, I'm sorry, um, a grant uh, years ago. And I used to use it with my, my uh, elementary kids. So it's been around for a while. Um, but I used to use it because it, it's a lot of opportunity costs, but it's also a lot about the environment and the climate and, and taking care of your like a uh, little urban area. Um, oh, Tessa said uh, 2048. Um, I was addicted to that for a very long time. Uh, 2048 <laughs> is a lot of fun. In fact, I think we're previewing that. Carrie, we pre pre uh, previewing that game? I didn't have that one listed for us, oh, but we certainly can. I'll just mention real quick. So 2048, very simple game. You can play it for free. It's on iOS, it's on Google Play, or you can actually just find it on the web. 
it's the premise is very simple. You basically double, you start with two and you really want to try and your work your way up to 2048. Um, so it has those math facts, those built in quick math facts. The issue is, is that as you move, you start to run out of space and what will happen is, is your game will be over if you can't increase the size of your tiles, your number tiles, easy to pick up, easy to learn. Um, uh, Steve mentioned the Oregon trail. Absolutely fantastic. I used to play it with my, um, my 13 year old who's out, outgrown it, but, um, it's kind of like, uh, the Oregon trail meets, um, like a Farmville for Facebook. It's, it's land, it's like, um, town management. Um, you get to lot, learn a lot about the, uh, you know, history and vernacular and economics and opportunity costs and just, uh, it's just a fun game to kind of uh, nonviolent, uh, resource based. Really cool. Um, yeah, I saw Cellcraft and Immune Defense. Those are great secondary biology um, games. And it definitely was one of those games where, as I was playing it, I really saw how it can be used in a classroom. Mm -hmm. It definitely requires a little bit more support or just a really higher level learner. But uh, even as an adult, I was. I was learning stuff or relearning stuff that I haven't really thought about since college. So definitely did a really good job of teaching me or reteaching me. Yeah. And uh, you know, and your uh, was it uh, Kelly's mentioning a few of the serious games like third world farmer. Um, I used to, let's see, I taught a course to honors college students in which they played third world farmer and they learned about serious games because people, uh, a lot of people don't know about serious games. They're games that are developed to either, um, promote like a big idea or or teach somebody how to do something it's really about like um like political awareness um so there's a lot of these um uh, you know one of the more popular ones that have dis it's now i think disappeared since then is darfur is dying which uh, taught people about the uh, genocide that was occur occurring in uh, darfur africa and uh it's since unfortunately it was flash based and i think it just disappeared uh, because it probably just couldn't be updated anymore, but it disappeared. It was a really, um, it was one of those games that just took your breath away with just how powerful the message was. So the, the gameplay was almost a byproduct. It was really the message that it conveyed to you. Um, yep. And the political process, there's a lot of, Steve, there's a lot of games like that, the political process where you're going to find them with um, like fake, there's a fake news game. Uh, which is a very, it's a very simple structure. It's, it's not like, it's not the most gorgeous design, but it does have a powerful sense there uh, in just how current it is and just teaching, it teaches children about media literacy. Yeah, and it, and it, again, it is sad that a lot of these flash-based games are disappearing, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's, they can be hacked easily. They can be manipulated and they can cause even if you're just passively web browsing, you know, uh, you know, dangerous agents could actually, you know, infiltrate or it's, uh, or, or uh, promote like malware and spyware. So it is, it's very, um, it's very sad that we're going to lose a lot of them, but here's the thing. It's the gaming, even the learning game industry is a very vast place with a lot of tools. What happens is we just have to keep on curating these and sharing these with all of our um, groups. So, uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and move on. Um, we're doing great with time. I just want to make sure that everybody got a chance to actually download this, um, download the resource, take a look at it. There's a lot of other things. And, um, and a lot of people are sharing, which I'm excited about, because what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to get you to even be more participatory in just a few minutes. I promise. So let me, let's get going. So let me advance the slide here. There we go. I'm really enjoying all the chat, uh, the conversation in the chat. It's really great talking with you guys. So I'm going to be brief on this slide because we've already talked about most of this. So again, the audience for this guide and the reason we have flash games in this one is that we did want to put out something that was quick and reactive. Whereas the, our next project is going to be a lot more specific, a lot more comprehensive and unfortunately will not be including flash games because as we're all chatting about, it's not a long-term solution. So um, I think we can go ahead and move yeah, to- Yeah, I'm sorry, I lost my, <laughs> I lost my uh, screen. Fine, on. you are fine. Okay, there we go. Now, now we're moving on here, so. Yes, so- Okay, I, go ahead. 
I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and just show a couple of these games that we've been talking about. And I'm going to show one from each. Um, one I from hit stop share. Go ahead. Each, age category. So you'll see we are going to also share. Um, we're going to talk about argument wars also. So the first one that I'm going to showcase again, this is just a quick little flash game, nice and quick. It's something you can have your students just pull up immediately. Definitely works for those little guys. Comes up with some clear instructions. So ideally you would either have a student who is old enough to be able to read this and understand it on their own, or you would be doing this as guided play where you are getting the learner started or you would have them partnered up with someone who can kind of help them go through this themselves. You can put it on different difficulties. It's got the accessibility with game speed as well. And once we get started, and these games really do get addictive because even as an adult sitting here going through, I'll think to myself like, ooh, I can really just keep going. It's hard to ever feel like you want to stop. So again, I could keep going and going and going, um, but we'll go on to the next game. So this one again is for the primaries. This is one of my favorite games out there, especially um, how many of you guys have younger kids and younger um, children who are in maybe like third or fourth grade or have re recently been through that age and they've been learning new math. Uh, as a fifth and sixth grade math teacher, I've had so many parents come to me saying, I don't understand what new math is. And the one that they tend to get stuck on the most is the area model. So Mount Multiplus really shows exactly how the area model works and how we use the distributive property with this picture model in order to multiply, um, in order to do multiplication. So again, I'm going to be Going through here, we are trying to figure out what three times five is. So it's showing me that the width here, where the length here would be three and the width would be five. And then I can go ahead and drag two planks. And it's using this to break it down. Drag this card to get one more plank. And can you guys hear my, the game audio? Yes, I hear it a little bit. Okay, so it's kind of got these little quippy um, commentary where they're kind of making the kid feel good and saying like, oh, that's even harder. But lastly, we will move over to Argument Wars. Let me make sure I don't have too many game audios going at the same time here. So Argument Wars is part of iCivics and it does have a couple of different ways it can be played. You'll see here it also has the, um, it is advertising that it does have mobile versions. So, but this is also a flash version of it. So again, all of these different platforms are listed. And it really engages the learner right away by having you create your own character and you need to decide which side of the um, case you're going to be working on. So I can decide who I want to represent. And then you go through a narrative and you have to basically be going through a, a battle to make your... And as you get later into the game, I'm going to just try to go through some of these pieces here. but. You know, it's very funny, it's very witty, but you're seeing words like amendments, they're going through the Bill of Rights, they're going through the Constitution, they're talking about important things like chemical weapons. And then as you get in a little bit later, you have to be able to pick out exactly which amendment you're gonna use in your argument. And then once you go through and pick that, you end up going into basically a card battle at, with your opposing um, the, the opposing side. And as you saw in the beginning, you can choose which side. So it's pretty neat that you could have learners learning different perspectives from things too, because they're basically doing an online debate. 
to pull that. So it's also teaching them that they need to be able to um, pull resources and find um, primary sources to back up their arguments. Okay, so let me, sorry, hold on. Oh, sorry. Technical difficulties, I'm coming back. It's going from millions of screens to millions of screens. So. <laughs> okay, coming back here quickly. And, oh Mitch, I'm glad you're enjoying bad news. That's especially an important one right now with um, a lot of different media going around. Yes. Absolutely. I was wondering in that iCivics game, um, is it possible for different people to win at different times? So if I represent one side one time and could I win one time and then maybe make not as strong an argument and lose? Yeah, you can definitely do that as long as you're pairing up which amendment or which part of the constitution that you, that as long as you have your primary sources to back it up, you can make any argument for it. Yes, thanks for covering my uh, my bacon while I tried to get my <laughs> shows going here, folks. I appreciate it. So, okay, so just a little bit about our next uh, project uh, because a lot of people are like, oh, well, this guide is great, but again, it's just it's you know it's a lot of games, it's a lot of ideas. It is really geared towards educators and parents to quickly get a, at a glance, but again, it's has limitations. We took just a few weeks to prepare this material because we, it was needed here and now. It was, it was a just-in-time solution um, that was meant to not do some sort of uh, deep dive into why gaming and learning is so powerful. It's like, here's some games. Let's get it into the hands of the people that need it right now. Um, so what we ended up doing is uh, we ended up um, uh, what we ended up taking a lot of some of the content that we used for this uh, for this book that we're creating right now called the Learning Gu um, Arcade, which is much more of a everybody can see that screen, right? No, Ryan, I was going to say I'm not sure that we can. It's right now paused. Hold on, I want to unpause it though. <laughs> I want to resume share. Okay, now you should be able yep, to. Yep, we're good. Okay, darn it. Okay. Okay, so anyway, here's the Learning Arcade, and this is um, what Carrie and I have been working on, this, this self-published uh, guide of, it's not just uh, games, it's not, and we are, we're mining a lot of different learning games, uh, digital learning games, and um, these gaming hubs uh, that are just massive collections of learning games, like iCivics, I'd consider a learning game hub because it has much more than just one game attached to it, it has a, many games. It's almost like a one-stop shop for um, learning games. This is more of a comprehensive text. It goes through and, and uh, explores the vocabulary involved with gaming um, and learning. It, it talks a little bit about uh, you know why games are such powerful vehicles for learning. Um, it, it, let's see, it shares like let's see, it, it shares the um, a little bit about the history of it. Um, again, but it also then gives you a boatload of games and it also gives you ideas that if you're an educator how to actually use them inside the classroom so you have it now what do i do so i have this great game how am i going to make this work in a, a classroom that's filled with uh you know if i have only five digital devices but i have 20 kids how's this going to work maybe you know post covid 19 when we enter our classrooms again or how is this going to work like remotely um when we're not in a classroom and we want to support our students as they learn through these games. So we include the grades and we also even try and uh, connect some to, um, if they're not academic standards, but they're also like concepts and skills that are involved inside the game. We also talk about uh, the connections to learning. Again, what's this going to teach? How does it teach it? And again, suggested uses in learning environments. Is this going to be something that's powerful for like a whole class type of activity? Is this something that's going to be useful at centers? Is this something that's going to be useful for independent study or some sort of play-based um, activity? Is it uh, good enrichment? Is it good for like um, helping students that might need like to further development? Uh, right now, my youngest is using Dreambox uh, quite extensively with his uh, 
you know, for his activities. He's also using Lexia, which is helping with uh, English language arts um, quite a bit. It's very phonics based, but a very powerful type of game based learning packed with learning analytics in the background. So um, very useful. So anyway, this is the learning arcade. It's still in development um, and you actually get to be a part of it if you're interested. Uh, we'll talk about how you would like to participate in this in just a second. So let me move on to our last and final, oh, I'm sorry, our last and final hands-on activity. And that is um, uh, activity three. So I want you to think about this as we gave you a bunch of games um, 40 games, you know, 10 learning game hubs that maybe you're interested, but we know that this is not a finished product. We know that we, you know, Carrie and I have already discussed about coming out with an additional like a COVID-19 um, book that's a little more comprehensive, includes some more games, um, it, you know, almost like version two. Um, uh, we're also hybrid talking learning. about, what was that? What was or that? hybrid learning, because we're yeah, about yeah, maybe yeah. all embark in something new again. <laughs> Yeah, and and then of course the the we haven't given up on finishing the learning arcade. It's just uh, in fact, now that we've gotten this guide out and we've gotten a lot of the buzz on the street about it, um, it's actually um, creating quite of interest in the learning arcade, and we really want to work on it. Um, what we're gonna do is this: is I'd like you to take a moment. Um, this link right here uh, is an active link um, that we'll also paste uh, into the chat box. If you'd like to, um, we'd like to ask you if you have any suggestions for learning games that maybe we have not included. Remember, this is not an extensive guide. Uh, if there's if there's a learning game out there that you feel like we just have to share with the world, we, we're asking for that. We're also asking for you if, uh, we know that we have some gurus and some some game-based learning experts uh, in here, probably like, yeah, I know that, yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Ryan, or oh yeah, yeah, don't forget to say this. We'd also like to hear from you about what content or advice would you suggest that we add to the next publications? Is there something that you would advise us to add? Remember, this guide was really meant not only for educators, but really for parents that are like, okay, I'm not a teacher, but I want my student, I want my children to learn um, so we're really just trying to find things that were really almost, almost you open the box, you download the program, and it's almost ready to start uh, teaching and learning. However, we know that there's other content out there, other ideas, other suggestions. We're also looking for you to give you um, some interest and feedback and help us guide the next projects. So this is just a simple Google form. It's just a few questions. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you about three to four minutes just to fill it out. Um, and, in, and as you're filling this out, we'll go in the chat box and answer any of the questions that you might still have about the guide or the, um, uh, the guide or some of our ideas or anything else that, um, or if you want to just uh, share with some of the, again, some of the games that you put into the Google form, we'll do that. So I have about three to four more minutes. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this chat. Yep. Yep, Marty mentioned Quizlet and Kahoot. We were going to do those type of gamified like activities um, that are useful. Um, those are actually in the learning arcade. We didn't want to put them into this guide just because I don't think it's going to be very useful for, um, uh, for parents. Um, but it's definitely something to think about when it comes to learning arcade. In fact, I think we've already actually done it. Yeah, I was just about to say that in the chat too, that gamified th um, sites are also great too. I use Kahoot with my students a lot and they really love it, but that's still more based on the content and less about something that's engaging them. Although I do have students who will voluntarily play it with each other and just quiz each other. So it, it is engaging them. Um, Dave mentioned, and uh, Dave, I, I believe this is uh, Dr. Paloff, uh, mentioned uh, any good like long form like uh, commercial entertainment games. Absolutely, Dave. Um, uh, there is uh, a couple of the ones I sent you through email. There's um, what remains of Edith, uh, Edith Finch. There's um, mm -hmm. another law. Uh, there's Assassin's yeah. Creed actually has the educational version right now that just looks like insane. Yeah. Um, the discovery mode uh, that which Carrie mentioned looks really good. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Breakout EDU is a great like type of Tessa is like a gamified type of activity. I do like it because uh, you do get immersed um, in it. And it's great for professional development too. 
Uh, if you want to do it, I've seen professional development breakout rooms that are just uh, great. But breakout edu, Tessa, thank you for adding to that. It's, it's a great point. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Yeah, you guys mentioned uh, like what remains of Edith Finch. Gone Home is another one. That was one of the first um, like first person exploration games like that um, that I know teachers have used in classrooms before as a, almost as a supplemental text. So for higher level English language, um, like ELA classes, you're usually having students compare text to text and then comparing text to video. And the idea there is they're pulling from two different media types. So by having them compare text to a video game or um, movie to video game, and they're continuing to compare different media types. And as Ryan mentioned at the top of the webinar, gaming is so prevalent these days. Um, kids are gaming, adults are gaming, everyone's gaming, everyone has a phone, everyone has accessibility to games. And so it really needs to be integrated into our curriculums the same way that we've integrated video. I mean, that was, you know, controversial when that first came out and yeah. until the research backed it up and now everybody uses it so um and if you want a beautiful here's a here's a game that i just happened to um kind of discover it's a beautiful game uh, i played it with my children a few times in fact i ended up getting a nintendo switch for them event you know just about maybe about four or five months ago it was a it was a gift um and we played gris g-r-i-s it's a beautiful game um it, number one, the graphics are stellar. It starts off monochromatic, so it starts off with just one color. But as you go through and you play the game, uh, it ad ends up adding color to it. Uh, there's no violence. There's no death. There's no mayhem. Uh, it's you are solving like abstract problems. Um, you are a, um, a young female protagonist um, who are solving all these these interesting um, like situations, like all these visual puzzles. Um, and again, it's not like the typical stereotypical like female heroine, uh, you know, with all of the just the, the wrong body image or anything like that. It's just a it's a norm. It's a, a normal female going through and solving this. But um, it actually is very powerful for social emotional learning because it's teaching you the different stages of grief. Um, very powerful game um, that I have played a little bit of, I am going to play more of. Uh, my my, uh, my seven-year-old has, I think, pretty much uh, hijacked the switch now permanently. So I don't, I think I've, I may have lost that, that battle. Uh, but it's a very beautiful game. Um, if you ever want something that's peaceful, that has like that, uh, almost like that peaceful music that kind of like a you know, uh, lowers your blood pressure, calms you down, especially in this time of it, in this day and age. Uh, it's definitely a game that I suggest. Um, it's it's frustrating enough to want to keep on going. However, it's it's not so, you don't get so angry that you just want to throw it down and just, you know, it's just right at that, kind of right at that balance of good challenge, but it's not so hard that you get frustrated and turn the game off. Um, so yeah, and, and I have some really other just fantastic, oops, sorry, I was just uh, waxing and waning on here. And I also just had some good questions like, do we notice any gaps in games like, mm -hmm. like certain populations that are not, um, that really aren't addressed in these learning games? Yes, um, I would have to say like the older grades, like high school, they are, but the, um, the content gets to be a little bit more, um, it, it tends to kind of swerve away from so much the academic standards or mm -hmm. um, the ideas, but you can still find them. It's just, you, you have to search for them a little easier. I think a lot of the games that are developed for younger children have much more, they're, they're much more prevalent in the marketing. Uh, they're much more, um, there's a lot more word of mouth because not only are the kids talking about it, but the parents are talking about it too. So I, I think that's still a very big gap is uh, just finding games. And that's why we're doing this book too, is mm -hmm. to curate these games because we just don't know. Sometimes we hear one of the very pot, one of the biggest strategies for actually finding games is word of mouth is just sharing from one person to the next. And that's not just for um, teachers that are using game-based learning. It's also for just parents that are sharing really good games uh, they're like, oh, you know, did, did your, is your kid playing this? Or, oh, you know, what about Animal Crossing or something like that? They're just 
starting to share that. I'm starting to learn this too. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's the word of mouth and, you know, it's Ryan, all about you Pokemon Go. So go ahead. You can't casually drop Animal Crossing without shifting the entire topic of conversation. <laughs> I'm sorry. And it's funny. It's like, we're almost getting close to the end. So I wanted to make sure to add that just to show my uh, street credit <laughs> that I'm not are just you, a mudgeon. Are you playing Animal Crossing? I am. I'm not. I just, I have, um, I'm sticking to my normal ones. And uh, <laughs> this, this should be almost like a closing. What games are you playing right now? So I'm still playing Clash of Clans with my kids. Um, I, uh, let's see, I am getting ready. I'm gearing up. I just started teaching a course in which I am getting ready to play more games with my students. Um, so right now I haven't had as much time to game just because of homeschooling my children, but, uh, I'm getting ready to gear up towards more games. Um, I'm trying to think of any of the other ones that are just uh, not coming up to my head right now. Um, my, ki my kids are dying to get me into um, Brawl Stars. They're, um, I've been playing Hole IO, which is basically you just eat up a city with a big hole, like a black hole. It's just very, very silly. There's no good premise. It's not a learning game, so, so bad me. But it is a good way for me just to kind of disengage and get into a game. Um, there's other games too. Uh, you know, as I said before, Gris is one I really want to get into because I've only gotten through one stage. I want to keep on going. So. Gary, I know I dropped Animal Crossing. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I know you could probably sit here and just rattle off more. Is there anything yeah. else? I, uh, but similarly, um, between remote teaching and I do have an infant at home. Uh, so my gaming time is limited. But um, I am playing Animal Crossing. It's an embarrassing number of hours. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm also playing Earthbound. Um, which is an old school JRPG. I don't know if any of you guys have played it, um, but some friends and I are going back and trying to pick off some old games that we've never finished throughout the year. So that'll be fun and interesting. Yeah, it's, they're a lot of fun. The long form games I find are a little tougher to get into. Um, it just, you know, I had a lot of plans before this pandemic hit that I'm just not, you know, seeing through. But a lot of people are starting to mention like, Plague Incorporated and um, mm -hmm. just other games. These are ones, again, Last of Us 2 is coming out in a few weeks. I will say this plate was it PlayStation 5. I ended up, uh, they delayed, I think, until Christmas, if I'm not mistaken, or I'm sorry, until um, uh, the winter season. Um, so that's just, uh, that's a little negative. But, you know, Apple opened up Arcade, which opened up a just a giant plethora of different games for a small subscription price. Mm -hmm. There's Stadia. So games are really being promoted as really entering our households a lot easier and they're becoming a lot less uh, stuck to one um, platform. Um, anyway, so let me go ahead. We are just getting ready to close down in just a moment. I wanted to show you all this. So if you're, you know, beyond just the interest in just, oh, you know, what can I do? Or, or you know, if you're be going beyond just like, I'm a parent, I need help with games or I'm a teacher, I was like, oh, here's a strategy. If you're really intrigued in game-based learning, I did have, uh, I did create, I did write uh, three books before the Learning Arcade and before this guide, uh, Making School a Game Worth Playing, Digital Games in the Classroom. There's also Using Digital Games as Assessment Instruction Tools. And finally, the one I released uh, more recently was Game On, Using Digital Games to Transform Teaching, Learning, and Assessment. And um, uh, it's a, these books are very manageable. They give a lot of games, but also a lot of ways to use them in the classroom, to use them with learners and students. If you're interested, there is a link to the quick download. You know, we can find it on Amazon. Uh, you're more than welcome to also visit the author center. That's my only commercial, I promise. Um, but, uh, you know, very, you, you know, they're very, they're filled with a lot of different games. They're still active today and very useful. So um, anyway, as a, kind of like a closing, we just wanted to, to thank you all for joining us today. Um, we, uh, you know, first, you know, I thank you to Carrie for doing this. You know, Carrie is a, a new mother. She is a current teacher. She's probably teaching right now. I won't tell Carrie. Um, <laughs> we have, uh, you know, we have off for election day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's anyway, she volunteered her time to try and, and, help present uh we know that there's a lot of teachers in need there's a lot of people parents in need there's a lot of educational professionals in need that want these different strategies and tools to use with learners 
Uh, we wanted to thank Mitch for hosting this, and he's the one who said, hey, Ryan, we love your guide. Do, do you want to, you know, would you mind doing an EdChat Interactive webinar about it? We were like, we jumped at the, we jumped at the option. We, we jumped at the um, opportunity. Um, and then Sue Boyle, who uh, she runs the Serious Play Conference, um, she has uh, promoted us in the past. She is, um, she is a, again, a kindred spirit, tries to help us out all the time. Um, we thank her for, for providing, uh, you know, our kind of our session here. I uh, want to thank EdChat Interactive for hosting this free, um, this free webinar to help us promote this tool. And again, the tool, this, uh, this guide is free for you to use. You may distribute it to anybody you would like. Uh, it is uh, free you and it will not, you know, not cost any money. We promise in the future, please share it on Twitter, share it on Facebook, share it wherever you would like. You know, if you want to print out a piece of paper and share it with somebody, go right ahead. We don't care. And we also wanted to thank all the teachers and education professionals during this time, uh, during this just challenging time. Um, not only are we dealing with just this, this, this global pandemic, but, you know, we, we're now, you know, we're dealing with the unrest because of the, you know, the systemic racism that's now occurring and just, uh, you know, all the protesting and all the situations. And we know that it's a scary time, but uh, through games, hopefully you get some comfort and you're able to, uh, make serious connections with all of your, um, with all your students or all your children. And um, we hope that this has been worth your time. And uh, we really look forward to your feedback and opportunity. Please reach out to uh, both Carrie and myself on Twitter. We're active users on Twitter. We would love to connect with you. Uh, we would love to, um, if you like this, you know, please do promote um, the guide online. We would love to, or have a discussion. If you have questions, please ask us. This is meant to be uh, just a jumping board for your continued um, lifelong learning situations. Yep. And there'll be a recording and uh, Mitch will, you know, he's really good about getting these things up pretty fast. So you can come back and see it again or share it. So um, did I mess up on the time? Uh, two o'clock. I was told. Right. No, no, no. I'm just saying somebody said, Mitch said two, two o'clock Eastern. Uh, well, Laura said that. So it's like, uh, I must have messed up. I'm really sorry, Laura. But yes, there will, there will be recording or there is a recording. Oh, sorry, Laura. And reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to send you the resources and stuff. Um, it's, you know, it could have just been like a, a hiccup. But uh, the nice thing about EdChat Interactive is they record everything. So you're all able to see it afterwards. And uh, the author, you know, uh, both Karen and myself are available. If you need anything, please just reach out to us. Um, we'll get back to you quickly. Well, thank you. Thank you both for appearing. Uh, the, the great games, really um, incredibly impressive the amount of work that, you, that, that you're doing and uh, putting the guide together for people so fast. And uh, I can't imagine doing it and being a new parent and teaching and, you know, all the other things that, that you're doing. So, uh, so thank you. Well, thank you Thanks, Mitch. And uh, hopefully, hopefully see uh, during the summer as well. Everybody, um, we have a, we do have some more EdChat interactors coming up in the next uh, month or so, and hope to see you with them. And um, have a great rest of the afternoon. This is Mitch Weisberg signing off for EdChat Interactive. Thank have you, everybody. Day. Be safe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>